I feel like, as a vintage tool aficionado, I'm almost required to have an old monkey wrench. This one, at this point, is so crusty I can't really tell what it needs. The screw is really loose, this is loose, the handle is cracked. I think the first thing to do is to break this apart and just throw it in some evaporust and see what I've got. I can't tell what on this is worn and what was just a loose fit originally. Now I can start to see what I've actually got to work with here. This piece is bent and it's been used as a hammer, which it's sort of supposed to be used like that. So I'm just going to straighten this and file that down a little bit, call that piece pretty good. The only mark I found on this was this T with a diamond under it. If you can't identify it, maybe one of you is an expert on old monkey wrenches and can tell me more about that. This piece is pretty decent. I don't think there's a whole lot I need to do with that. Or the little nut, maybe just clean that up a little bit more, chase the threads on it. I was hoping this was just going to be a quick de-rust, make a new handle, maybe remake this screw and call it good. The thread on this is really interesting. It's well, some sort of stub thread, but it looks like the peaks of the threads are much wider than the valleys, and it's a left-hand thread. 9 TPI. So the issue is this piece isn't really worn at all. It looks pretty good. I still want to remake that just so that I can remake this part so that it's a little tighter there. And this screw is actually a little bit too short for the wrench, so it kind of works its way out of this piece. The problem here is there's no wear on this per se, but these threads in here are really worn. They're just about gone. It's just it's basically down to a V thread, and it's really sloppy. So I think the thing to do here is going to be to try to weld this up and then re-tap it and then make a new screw as well. While I'm at it, this is also really loose. So I think if I can weld up here and there a little bit and then file it back to shape, that should give me a nicer fit on there. I was planning on this being a really simple restoration, not one of those ones that's over the top and end up with something that's way nicer than it ever was when it was original. But having to redo these threads kind of throws a monkey wrench into those plans. Something oddly satisfying about hand fitting something like this just using files. I sandblasted this and these other pieces just to even out the texture and just chase the threads and we'll call this piece done. I noticed this piece isn't sitting squarely here, so I've just got some blue on there to figure out where it's actually making contact, and then working with files to try to square it up a little bit, get it to seat a little better. Really what I'm trying to do here is create a reference surface that's square to the shank of the wrench so that the screw will be tapped in there square. I think that's good enough, so I'm going to deck this off and get ready to tap that.
I decided I can't live with the gap there, so I'm just going to square this upper jaw off a little bit too. This is taking a bit of thinking to figure out how to reference this when it's down. I have a six inch parallel, so I'm going to butt this up against the end of the parallel here, touch off on this end of the parallel, and then come back over six inches. So now I've got two surfaces that are coplanar and perpendicular to the shank of the wrench. I'm just going to bring the rest of this in with files because this is actually curved a little bit. That's a nicer fit and the jaws are pretty well parallel now. This is a 9 TPI left hand stub thread of some sort. Uh, looking at it closely it might be a 60 degree, but I want to remake this piece anyway just so it will fit better in the wrench. It's hard to tell because the threads are really shallow, but it turns out that the tool I ground for cutting the worm for my rotary table has just about the right flat on the end of it for doing this 9 TPI stub thread on it with a 29 degree angle. It works out that this tool is about two and a half thousandths different than what I want for the stub thread. But for hand grinding it, I don't think I can get a whole lot closer, so I'm just going to go with that. This is some O1 tool steel. It's, it's 397 in diameter because you want a clearance of at least ten thousandths. Set up to cut a 9 TPI thread, and I've got an indicator here just to keep track of how far in I'm cutting these threads. It's always paranoia check, especially because it's a 9 TPI thread. Have you ever cut a 9 TPI thread? I don't know why you would. So to set the taper on this tap, I can see in here where this is going to bottom out. I want the taper to run out basically where it's going to start breaking through the inside there. So I get full threads here. That way I'll have plenty of taper to make it a little easier to cut the threads. Compound backed off as far as I can. So I know that I'm not going to go past that. Lock the carriage there. I had to pull this thing out of the collet chuck a bit to get enough clearance for the handle on the compound. And now I'm just fiddling with it trying to get an angle that I like. I'm still trying to wrap my head around which side of which thread clearance ends up on when you're making a tap that cuts a female thread. So I turned this down smaller than it needs to be, but I think it'll still be fine. The geometry of it works, so I'm not going to mess with trying to work back. I'll just have a little bit here that doesn't have any threads on it, and that might just help center it in the hole a little better. I've got some burrs on here. I'm just going to clean it up real, real lightly.
We spent a long time looking at a bunch of different taps to try to understand the geometry of getting the rake right on the teeth. But in the end, I'm just going to eyeball this. That sure looks like a tap. I'll harden it and see if it actually taps. Cleaned that up with a wire wheel, checked it, it seems pretty hard. So now I'm just tempering it back to a straw color, working from the shank down so that the shank it's tempered a little bit more, trying to keep that heat even. Wrong way. Left hand tap. Oh, that works way better. This is just real slow going, but it's slowly making chips, breaking them off. Little tiny ones, but it's going. A lot of times Acme taps will be a two-stage tap with basically a V-thread sort of thing to rough it out, and then a final Acme thread tap to finish it. And given how long this has taken, that might have been a good idea. But it's getting it done. If you look at this thing from this angle, it looks like a success, but, if you, but what happened was it cracked out where I'd welded it before and just kind of pushed that out of the way rather than really cutting the threads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and weld, I'm going to weld this side back up and then chase the threads before I file that back in again. I'm going to call that a step in the right direction. So as I sort of expected, the original screw doesn't fit in there, but I was going to remake this anyway because it is actually a little too short. And I found in the scrap bin, I think this is left over from the axle that I used for my rotary table. It's about the right size for the little knob.
I've been fighting with this for a while, and I can't get a neural on here that I'm happy with. And I know from past experience that trying to neural harder material is a lot tougher than doing something softer. So I'm going to punt on this. And so dug around. I found this old bolt. And I feel like there's something appropriate about making part of a wrench out of a bolt. So I'm going to go with that. That's more like it. I think if I can knock a little bit of that burr off of there, that'll be pretty good. So why go through all that trouble if I'm not going to use the original screw anyway? Well, actually the screw was the part that I wanted to replace. I wanted to make this a little tighter in that notch. And I think that this stub thread is actually a really good thread to use for this. So comparing this 3 8 12 full depth Acme thread to the 3 8 9 stub thread, the stub thread actually has a bigger minor diameter in there so it's going to be a little bit stronger than this one. And since this is coarser, you're not going to spend as many times turning it to move the wrench back and forth. So I think this is a really good thread to use anyway. I needed to re-tap that hole. This was the thread I wanted to use. That way I can keep the original pitch at least. This was also just an exercise in seeing if I could do this and make it work. It's a learning exercise. I hit everything with the sandblaster again, get it nice and clean and even out all the tool marks. Now what I'm going to do is do a light cold blue and then go back with some Scotch-Brite or a wire wheel just to mellow out the cold blue. I don't want it black, but I want a little bit of color to it. Now I'm just going to do a little steel wool just to kind of mellow out the cold blue a little bit. I don't want it real dark. 